of this quadratic function is part 10, the discriminant. In the last lesson, we used the quadratic formula to solve the equation x squared take 5x plus 3 equals 0. And the solutions were x equals 4.303 and x equals 0 0.6973 to three decimal places. By solving this equation, we are finding the roots of the function, i.e. where the graph crosses the x-axis, and we can see it here and here. But why did we get two results? The plus and minus root 13 part meant we found two solutions. Was we to split the formula into two at this point. So therefore, we found two real roots there and there. Let's investigate some other outcomes. If we apply the quadratic formula to this equation, which is x squared take 4x plus 4 equals 0, we would have this line of working. And we will get the solutions x equals 2 or x equals 2, i.e. the same answer and therefore the same place on the graph. So we get one root here. Why did we get just the one answer or you know answers which were equal to each other? Well, the plus or minus zero part just meant that we were adding zero or subtracting zero, which is the same thing. So it gives us the same result. So in this case, we say we found equal real roots. If we apply the quadratic formula to the equation x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0, we will have this line of work. And we can't go any further than there. Why did we get no results? Plus or minus square root of negative 7 does not work. You cannot square root a negative number. So we found there well, no real result roots. So you can see on the graph there that there's not any points where the parabola touches the x-axis. So we say there's no real roots. So there's the summary of what we've just found out. When this number underneath the square root is positive, we get two real roots. When it's zero, we get equal real roots. And when it's negative, we get no real roots. So which part of the quadratic formula determined how many results we got? The number beneath the square root, i.e. the numerical value of b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. The discriminant determines the nature of the roots. So when b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, that gives us two real and distinct roots. And the graph cuts the x-axis in two places. So that's when b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, or we say positive. When b squared minus 4ac equals 0, we get equal real roots. The graph touches the x-axis in one place. <laughs> When b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, i.e. negative, we get no real roots. The graph does not touch the x-axis. So let's answer some questions now using the discriminant. Example 1. Find the discriminant of the quadratic equation x squared plus 4x minus 6 equals 0 and determine the nature of its roots. So we can pick out the a, b and c values. A is 1, B is 4, C is negative 6. And we put these into the discriminant. So there's a discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. Substituting A, B and C in. Gives us 16. And we've got two negatives. And that gives you 40. So because the discriminant is more than zero, the function has two real and distinct roots. We say distinct because they're at different places. 
we can tell them apart. Example two, the function y equals 4x squared plus px plus 1 has equal roots, determine the two possible values of p. So again, we start with a, b, and c. a is 4, b is p, and c is 1. Now we're told that it's got it's equal roots, so we can straight off start by writing b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And now substitute a, b, and c in. And tidying that up, we get p squared minus 16 equals 0. Now we recognise that this is a difference of two squares, it's a squared letter and a squared number. So that gives us p minus 4, p plus 4. Either bracket can equal 0, so that gives us two solutions, p is equal to 4 or p is equal to negative 4. Final example, the function y equals x squared take 2x plus p has no real roots. Determine the range of possible values of p. Start again, starting again with a, b and c. a is 1. B is negative 2 and C is P. We're told it's got no real roots, so that means our first line of work can say B squared minus 4AC is less than 0. Substituting A, B and C in. Have that. Tidying that up, we get 4 minus 4P is less than 0. Add on 4P to both sides. Keep the P term positive. Dividing both sides by 4, switching it around with the arrow still pointing at 1, as it was in the second last line, and our final answer is p is greater than 1. So the range of values that are possible for p is all the values which are more than 1.